The name Klein. Dr. Klein was the best infertility doctor in Indianapolis. The popular Netflix documentary Our Father brought national attention to a Hoosier doctor using his own sperm to impregnate dozens and dozens of women. I broke the story of Dr. Donald Klein fathering more than 90 children eight years ago when Jacoba Ballard first came forward to me. She's a proven fighter headed to Washington, D.C. now with six other victims of fertility fraud. Jacoba is joining us live via Zoom this morning along with another fertility fraud victim, Eve Wiley from Texas, who was not a patient of Dr. Klein's, but yet another doctor. Ladies, good morning to you. Let's start with you, Jacoba. It's so good to see you again. I can't believe it's been eight years and here you are now headed to Washington, D.C. this week. What are you going to be doing? Um, so this week, um, federal fertility fraud bill is going to be reintroduced. Um, and that is by um, Representative Vice, Cheryl, I'm looking to make sure I don't get their names wrong, Letlow and Houlihan. Yeah, we've had her actually, Representative Vice, on the show. And she said she watched our father and she was appalled and she could not believe that this was not a crime that a doctor that a fertility doctor could use his own sperm on women without their knowledge and eve this happened to you and you kind of started googling around and you first only learned about jacoba's story just from doing some research is that correct that is correct so i made my discovery in 2018 and as shocking as it was the most shocking part about it is that there was not a criminal or a civil cause of action to hold these doctors accountable so from 2018 um, I started lobbying for a bill in Texas, and it passed a week after Indiana, which Jacoba passed. And then from there, we went from one state to 11 states working across the country with other victims. And we started collecting all of these Me Too stories. And what we discovered is over 60 doctors in the U.S. that have done this. It's, a, um, it's just amazing. And what is, I think, even bigger, Jacoba, is the amount of years that it takes when something, it seems so obvious, it seems to be just common sense that you all are still fighting for this federal law. You'll be taking part in this round table and you're gonna have lots of different meetings. I'm wondering too, have you been able to get any Indiana lawmakers since this happened in our state to back you on the federal level? Not yet. Um, I actually have a meeting with um, someone from um, Jim Baird's office when I am there. So um, along with Eve, so graciously, thank goodness, has split us up and we're all going to, you know, different representatives that we've all requested meetings with. Eve, can you tell us and share a little bit about your personal story and what it meant to you as you found out that, you know, your mom's doctor did this? Yeah, you know, it was it was really hard because for me, I had found that sperm donor that my parents consented and selected to. And I met him when I was 18 and for 14 years and still to this day, we've had this beautiful relationship. I call him dad. My kids call him papa. Um, he officiated my wedding. You know, he's very much a very important part of my life. And so for me, here I was starting over at 30 years old for the third time in my life, just wondering who am I? And the biggest part of this is that my son had all these medical mysteries and, and I didn't have my medical information that was really important to his care. And so that's really what set me on this journey of um, figuring out who my biological father was and then holding him accountable in some capacity. Yeah, and I think, Jacoba, you have found that same thing with a lot of your siblings starting to have different kind of medical questions. I know you've spent some time, I don't know how much you want to get into that, um, with all kinds of medications and research trying to figure out what is going on with you. What do you want people to know as they watch your interview here and before you head to DC this week? Um, I'll go first. Support us. You know, we're going to need everybody um, to call their representatives and, you know, ask them to support this bill. 
Yes, and, and calling your representative in the House and asking them to come to this roundtable discussion on Thursday. Um, because like Jacoba in Texas, I don't have any of my representatives who have signed on just yet as well. So that really makes a huge impact in supporting our efforts in D.C. Yeah, it's amazing to me that you have a woman from a different state um, as one of the first people that signed on to this, but no one from your states that are saying, hey, ladies, this should be a crime. I mean, I, yeah, this has been an eight-year-long deal, and I know many of these women feel like they were raped. Um, mothers do, and it's just, it's not right. So I appreciate you, too, and I know that folks here at home can watch the roundtable discussion Thursday at 930. We wish you two the best of luck. Let us know how it goes, okay? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. All right, bye, guys. It's 849. Yeah, I think what needs to happen is those representatives need to take a look at our father, which is on Netflix, just to see the backstory on this. But as you mentioned, since 2008, six? Um, when I, fir I first got on into this on tw in 2015, 2015, when Jacoba reached out to me and said, hey, um, I have some evidence that I think you're going to want to look at. I believe my, doc my mom's doctor um, used his own sperm to impregnate a lot of women. And that story is still developing. Nine, developing. More than 90 children here wow. in Indiana. Wow.